Hi, we're here at Lee's, and we're just going to have a look at Lee's workshop, but I'd like to introduce you to the main man himself. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Giles wanted to start at the famous step, so uh, this is minus the ramp, so we're safe to step on it. However, the step is a bit rocky, so the cement has come loose, Giles, so... Uh, I'll be very careful. Mind the step. <laughs> See Stavos, he's uh, you can just lurking in there and just fancy him. Does, does need weeding a bit. So that's that's one of the reasons we converted the garden, so he had a nice, nice area. So. Okay, so this is the famous workshop, the neat housing. As, as you can see by the signage here. Okay, so, so yeah, to start off with, these are some of my leftover remote control cars and boats and what have you. This is one of my um, older models, which is still working now. Um, this one is a recent purchase, which cost a ridiculous amount of money. It does, I think it's something like 70 miles an hour. It's wow. bonkers. We've had it jumping ramps that we've set fire to at Pine oh Studios and stuff like that. Just stuff you do at lunchtime, you know. Big kid stuff. And this, this boat is quite good. We use that on the paddock tank at Pinewood, where whenever they fill the paddock tank with water, that used to be outside one of the workshops I worked in. So we used to nip out at lunchtime and uh, race it around the, around the paddock tank. Um, when we cleared out Pinewood, what, after one film, they were chucking all of these storage boxes away. So I grabbed them. So I'm, I'm looking a bit more organized probably than a lot of people are. Um, I've inherited a remote control boat collection which I'm refurbishing at some point. So I'm gonna try them out at a local lake. Um, I haven't put this up just because you're here, but this is a present from Sam. <laughs> oh dear. One of the world's tackiest Star Wars gifts. Good old, <laughs> good old Sam. Um, so that's the only 3D printer I've got. You'll see considerably more at the next house you're going to, I think. Um, so, but this, is, this has been bulletproof, this has been so good. Lots of resin printing goes on. Um, I do bring some work home sometimes and print stuff out. So there's something on there at the moment actually. Um, and also I found batteries not included figures on Thingiverse. So I'm on the batteries not included stuff at the moment as well. Um, what else we got? Pit droid on the, on the go. But I downloaded the wrong one. I've got the cartoon version. It, I don't like it as much as the other one. So, um, but I'll get it done anyway. So. But oh my god, so much I 3D print, so much filling and sanding. I don't know how you do complete Astromex, guys. I don't know how you do it. Fair play to you. Um, laser cutter? Canine. Oh, sorry, laser cutter, yeah. Um, haven't got this working yet, but I've put a, I've got a water filtration system in there and an extraction going out the back. That's in. But I'm just doing the Z axis, um, which is so it goes up and down so I can do etching on stuff and adjust the height. So that's work in progress. But these are great machines. We use one at work actually. It's it's really good, you know, for a cheap laser cutter. Um, so these are various domes, work in progress and finished domes. And uh, look, are you in a picture of Sam there? So, it, it yeah, there. this is from the last show, isn't it? I'm, I'm probably gonna frame it actually. Is that, is that bad, is that sad? I'd sell it. I don't know, yeah. Oh, and okay. the K9 on the floor here. So yeah, K9. So, yeah, that's 14 years. hopefully going to be done Fourth. eventually. I remember this stuff was really hard to get. Black pipe lagging. So uh, it's a bit knackered now, but they're all the bits I think that I need. So I will get back to that one day and get it finished and rolling around. Because now we're droid builders, I suppose we can bring that to a droid builders Absolutely. event as well. Absolutely, it's a droid so, builders, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's Star Wars. What else have we got then? So, the stuff behind you. So we've got 3D printed chopper. That was when I had a Creality printer. I printed all of that in, um, that's all ABS, so that's got to be worked on. Um, BB-8, again that was on the Creality, they're the thick panels, I'm probably going to reprint all the panels and do thin panels on this one, with a carry frame, um, and the, the drive system, the Joe's drive system had just come out when I started this, but I'll probably go for a more updated drive system in that now. Um, what else have we got? Finished mouse droids. Lots of 39.1% droids you'll see. They're coming to events with us, hopefully, so we can get the general public to race them. So they're all finished and working. Um, a DO, which I'm waiting for Matt Denton to finish the electronics board on. So that's pretty much done. Um, but just waiting for the final board to go in so I can program it. Got a few R2 details here. Um, so that's quite a nice riser. Some of these I have used in the films 
not that it was used but not that it was seen sorry but you'll see behind the scenes me um, checking the scanner on R2D2 in the behind the scenes video it just popping up so that's the one I used for that but sadly it was never actually seen in the film although we shot a lot on it I thought that would be seen but not to be done plus this this probe was used as well in some of the, in a couple of the films that is seen um, our pit droid is going to be on his travels I think so uh, you're yeah. taking him with you later on he's yeah. going off to Sam yeah, I think didn't Giles upset him, and that's why he came to you. Yes, yeah, he's, he's I don't been. Know what Giles did. He's been here a while, but uh, well, check the yeah. Droid Builders uh, log uh, on the website. There, yeah. there is a. I think we're going to find out Don't. more. So. Yeah. And then this is my shelf of randomness. Um, I've got a remote control Swan to do for someone at uh, at Pinewood. They just want that just for, just for a laugh. Now I have a fishing bait boat. I've got my scrubber droid. Which needs just a drive system to go on actually i need to sort these out but that's something else i'm doing then we've got my degeric board which is pretty much done mm, is, he on? is that one of ian martin's yes yeah so i haven't got the speakers working unfortunately so but, ian uh, martin electronics yeah it's really nice I've, I've done this one i had this done myself by a laser cutter and that's painted that surfaces i do a vinyl sticker as well but that version is painted um, you've got a nice digital display, but it, ne it needs redoing actually. Um, I'm going to get it moulded, but you can still see the 3D print line, so I've got to go over that again. That's like that. Um, Random bin. Then we've got this. This is the Kenner droid that we were working on as the droid builders. These parts have come to me, which need finishing, and probably probably going to 2K it white. Uh, but they got the scale wrong, unfortunately. So the body is too too long. So I literally just need to shorten the body and get a new body sticker done for it. And uh, that's be a event soon. And this, <laughs> this is Lego R2. Um, it's changed a bit since the face plant. Nice that's the back. Nice bit of filler that's there. That's the back of it actually. But uh, so where, where's the scratch mark? Ah, the scratch mark is here. That's that's all the damage really. That's all it was, just on the sticker. So that can be replaced. The dome did get damaged. I think that was the damage to the dome as well. But we've since used this at Pinewood when the ALT dome was designed by Jake Lunn. He used this and he sketched on it. So he he penciled all the marks for the ALT droid on it. Um, you can just see some of the pencil marks here actually. So he penciled the design on. And then I had that transferred to CAD, and then I had the domes laser cut because I get the R2 domes laser cut, and um, we had the laser cutting done. So that was quite a nice process, quite a nice way of doing it. That's that. Um, there's the lathe. People might have seen my video of moving this half ton lathe down my garden over the porcelain slabs, which was a blooming nightmare. But we got it in, so that's going to live there. Haven't used it yet. It's been here about three months and not use it but that's because I'm using the work ones at the moment so I'll get around to it that's the messy corner don't video that miss that bit okay um, and then we come round to the Astromex so, so the, do you want to start uh, from the oldest to the newest yeah good shout so this one here um, he's retired he doesn't do events anymore although I'll probably update and get the MOT done we have MOTs on droids here in the UK so this will be MOTs um, this was my first build. This is the ANA frame and skins, which are styrene and aluminium legs and feet because I wanted the strong part to be there. And then it's got an R2 dome, which you just saw on the shelf back over there. But this is the Rollo dome, and this is what was never seen in the film. But people have, oops, people have know that, that this exists. But this is a scanner, this lit up, and it's got a riser in here which pops up so that we had that on RC so this pops up and flashes and we used it quite a bit didn't we Oliver I but ages doing that, it was never it was never seen so um, yeah that that lives like that that's what that does so that was my first build then my second build which I used to bring into Pinewoods and I'm still doing it now as you can see my R2D2 so the body this is all finished I'm just working on the dome now and the flaps are going to be all opening it's going to be all singing all dancing so I'm just doing that at the moment. Again, that's on the shelf. I've just got to connect the electronics up. It's all installed. So that was my second build and still going. So that's that's probably eight years of building so far. Wow. 
Um, but also in the meantime, while I've been working on that one, I've done this one. So aluminium dome, fiberglass legs, wooden frame with aluminium skins. And I had to do this, this, this was for Rogue One and C2B5. It's a color scheme that I created and I loved it so much, I quickly made one for myself. So this is not the one that was in the film, but an exact replica. And then this one, ALT, the face planted droid. And I've I've actually face planted it in my van as well in transit. And I've done a little repair job, but you can still see the remnants of the dent in the dome. And then just to show you what Sam's kind of done for me, is in there, can you get that? Previously wrecked by Sam Prentice. Good stuff. So yeah, so that, that was the one that Sam face planted and I haven't let him use it again. <laughs> Seems funny enough, not surprised. What needs to be designed is a simpler way, I think, of putting domes onto joints. A nice quick connection system. And then finally, um, this yeah this this is what I'm working on now and I'm actually timing how long it takes me so I'm, I've got a spreadsheet of a schedule to see how quickly I can build a droid so this is 28 days work um, which is uh, aluminium dome it's going to be an all aluminium build actually so I'll take the dome off and uh, so yeah just basic electronics inside so that's that pretty much finished and then we've got an aluminium frame, which is the same that Oliver cadded up for Force Awakens. That's the same frame we use for Force Awakens droids. It probably needs re-engineering because it's not very useful if you want doors opening. But um, it's still a nice frame. It's still a good thing to have. And something I've designed for this, something a bit of a work in progress, and I haven't tried this yet properly because I've only just glued the skins together, so I'm not sure if this will work. But the plan is, to magnetize so there you go so it's magnetized so what it is is I've just caddied up these little connectors and you can ha I'm going to share these on Thingiverse people can download these for free and you just got a proud magnet and then it just locates inside this hole which is another magnet and just clicks into place so it gives us a stronger pull because it goes into a hole and then it goes into the hole and it can't drop that's the plan so you you have to screw the skins on first to keep them nice and tight you could probably ratchet them on as well but then you just locate the blocks and then click it on so hopefully what we do then there you go frame on so it's nice and tight there's no no gaps on the top and with, I haven't driven it around yet obviously because I haven't got the legs and feet yet but hopefully that will be a nice little thing just if somebody wanted to redress their droid and use two different sets of skins it saves you changing the body and all the electronics and what have you um, and it's handy for maintenance as well you can just pop those skins off and um, just get better access to your droid Fantastic. so that's it I think that's all I've got to show one other thing though um, I have recently bought this amazing vacuum cleaner and when it arrived home Helen admired it and thinking it was a new droid. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Oliver. That could be one. But uh, no, there you go. Right. Thank you very much Lee for the okay, managed workshop. Right Lee, well thank you so much for taking part in the interview. I hope you no really problem, enjoyed it. Um, we don't have mugs as you may do but we do have this wonderful sticker for you. Oh cool. So, that will go on my toolbox. Fantastic. Thank you mate. These are now available actually on the merchandise site, so if you want one, please get one. <laughs> These are all going to charity. Obviously, it's a similar one to what Lee and Sam have, but if you all, it goes to our charity, so thank you very much if you go for it. Never misses a trick. <laughs>